guys? We're back with another live revival video here. Uh, this one's gonna be on an old truck that I found pretty local to the shop. It's been sitting out in this field for several years that I know of as I drive by and happen to see it. Uh, so we were able to track down the owner. She's gonna meet us over there. We're gonna check it out, see if it might be something that we need around the shop. If so, hopefully we can work a deal, load it up, and bring it back home with us. Good morning. How are you? Pretty good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for meeting us out here. Sure thing. So this is her, huh? Uh-huh. This is it. I know she's been sitting out here a little while, so I wasn't for sure if you might have been interested in getting rid of it or not. I, I think it's about time somebody got some use out of it. Yes, ma'am. Well, you know about how long she's been sitting out here? I'm going to say about five years. Five years, yeah. It's a 94, you said? Yes. Mind if I open the door? Go right here. Well, the body sure is straight. It ain't got that typical Dodge mm -hmm. <laughs> flaky paint job, does it? So this is definitely not one of our typical purchases around the shop, uh, nor would I say that it's among the top of something that's been sitting around the longest. Uh, being only five or six years it's been setting up is normally not a big deal for these old vehicles. Now this being something new, uh, problems can arise very quickly on these vehicles. So we're just going to try to examine it the best we can. Uh, just hope for the best, but prepare for the worst in it. See some cobwebs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And a lot of motor. Yeah. So this was your dad's truck, this correct? This was my dad's truck. Um, you know, they did construction, so they traveled. Yes, ma'am. the travel trailer with this one all over the United States. Yes, ma'am. So, it's got lots of road miles on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if it could talk, probably had some stories. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine so. Well, was it was it running okay, I guess, when y'all parked it? or It was. There was issues with the transmission. Yes, ma'am. It was sluggish, kind oh, yeah. of. Yeah, I noticed it's automatic, them old Dodge transmissions. That was kind of a weak point in them, them old trucks. Yeah. But. And if you listen to Michael, he says that Dad put 13 transmissions in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it was that many, but well, that's what he says. I don't know. Them old Dodge transmissions, like I said, they, they weren't built real strong. So, yeah. They... I do know that he did put quite a few in. Right. There. Once you start putting them in, they, yeah, it seems like a hundred of them after a while, <laughs> after just doing one. And, of course, you know, Dad was a Dodge man. Michael's a Ford man. So, there's, <laughs> yeah. he's going to stretch it a little bit since Dad's not here to defend himself. Check the old stuff there. Pretty good. It does have cobwebs, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Transmission coming Let's hope there's not a snake. Yes, I don't smell burn or anything. Sometimes just a little old filter change will right. make a difference on them. Right, yeah. So you're probably wondering why in the world a 94 Dodge truck? Uh, this one being a three-quarter ton, he come equipped with a 12-valve Cummins diesel. Uh, this motor is very sought after and used in a lot of projects. Uh, me and Dad have even put it in a 1963 Cadillac Hearse we have around the shop. Uh, this truck could be used as parts, but as clean as it is, I really hate to see something like that happen with it. Uh, I would love to be able to get it back to the shop, see if we can get it up and running. Knowing that this transmission's slipping a little bit could be either an expensive fix or something just as simple as switching out the filter in it. Uh, so if we're able to get it back to the shop, hopefully it won't take too much to get it up and running and get it on the road again. Honestly, this is probably the newest thing we've been interested in buying in a uh -huh. while. You know, most of the time we mess with the older stuff, but like I said, I'd driven by and seen it sitting out here, so yeah. I thought, well, I'll... Uh, we're always interested in, you know, a, a diesel to have around the shop, but... And I do have this headlight. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I think it's something that we can definitely use around the shop for something. I'm interested in seeing what it's going to take to try to... Probably won't take much anything to get it to crank up, but you never know, but... Like I said, it was cranking there. when we parked it out here. Yes, so. ma'am. Okay. It's just been sitting out here for the cows and the donkeys to rub on. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Well, it works for me. I'll go ahead and grab you some cash okay. and we'll make a game plan. Of, I don't know if I'll be able to have enough room to get that trailer up front here. I might load it backwards, but we'll Okay. We'll figure that out, I guess. I'll just winch it up on there and get it back to the shop and dig into it a little deeper. Just keep me updated with what you're doing with it. Yes, ma'am. I sure will. Well, I'll grab some cash real okay. quick and we'll make a game plan on getting it loaded up. All right, and All I right. have the title for you, too. All right, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I'm Angie Burgess. Um, Lance called me. He was interested in this truck here. This truck has a lot of memories. It belonged to my dad. We lost him in 2011. This was his work truck. He traveled all over the United States working, him and mom. And he always pulled the travel trailer with his truck. So um, I thought instead of it just sitting out here in the pasture, being a rub for the cows and the donkeys, might see what Lance could do because I know he's done some awesome work. So maybe he can fix this up and get it going again. Guys, we're going to go ahead and try to get this old Dodge up and running tonight, hopefully. <laughs> uh, I know five or six years is not very long for a vehicle to set around compared to what most of the stuff we've been working on around the shop. Uh, but this one's quite a bit newer than a lot of the stuff we drag up here. Being a 94 model, though, it's still old enough that it's not going to have a whole lot of computer system on it that we got to fight with on that. Um, as I stated in the video there that you just saw, uh, me and Dad put one of these out of a 93 model into a 63 model Cadillac hearse uh, we call Ecto Boost. Uh, so when we did that, it was so simple on wiring that thing up, I, we basically ran it off of two wires. Uh, one wire that runs to the fuel shutoff solenoid, which basically kills the motor, and then another uh, wire that runs down to your starter relay that basically turns the motor over. Uh, so these don't have any glow plugs or anything like that. Uh, they, they'll, it has a little grid heater here that helps uh, heat up the air whenever you're cranking it up. Uh, but other than that, they are pretty simple. Uh, now this one right here, uh, the batteries have been, they're dated 2010. Uh, the inspection sticker showed around 2014, I believe there. Uh, so it's been setting up for what, around six, seven six or seven years now. Uh, so for, what we're going to do right off the bat is obviously check all our fluids in it, change all our fluids in it, uh, and just start with that right there. Of course, we're going to need to change these batteries. I did go ahead and put a charger on it overnight to let it trickle charge just to see what might happen. And I'll kind of show you guys what you might expect if you was to do just right off the bat if you kind of wanted to mess with something like this. So we charged up the batteries here. And as you can tell, you turn the key over, 
We do have some interior lights. We have some noisy dash lights. The stereo does come on. Well, but it clicks, but that's about it. Uh, so yeah, them batteries are not gonna work out for us, obviously. So I guess probably what we'll go ahead and do is uh, we, we went ahead and bought some new batteries. Uh, I believe they should go right in the place of these as long as the posts are on the right, right way they need to be. Went with a little bit higher cranking amps. Uh, I believe these ones might have been a little bit low for this truck anyways. So while Dad goes and grabs those new batteries, I'm going to grab this camera inside the truck and just kind of show you around it a little bit better. Uh, some things that are kind of, kind of cool about this truck and some little downfalls on it as well. Noisy door dinger. So on the interior here, uh, what these trucks are super known for is the dashes are normally so bad in them. Uh, you can tell right here we've got one crack in it and that's it. Uh, that's the only crack that I've seen and it matches the windshield if you can see the crack that's in the windshield there. Uh, everything's red, which I guess was a cool thing back in the 90s to have the red interior. Does have power windows and, and power locks. I don't know that in 94 if that would have been something factory or if he's changed these door panels out and put motors in there as well. Uh, but the inside of it's uh, pretty clean. Pretty clean uh, to be a, you know, a 94 headliners hanging down. Another typical thing in these old Dodge trucks here. Body wise, Honestly, probably one of the cleanest paint jobs on these second gen Dodges that I've seen. Normally the clear coat is flaking on the whole trucks along the top, uh, the top parts right here. And uh, this one right here is not too bad. Missing some plastics on the bumpers here and there. The funny thing is she was talking to us, you know, it's missing some rubbers along the side here, this, this bumper molding. She said the only reason why that was gone is her, her cows and animals and stuff like that would, would literally rub up against this truck. Uh, scratching themselves and so yeah some of this rubber was like laying on the ground and we threw it in the bed of the truck there. On the tailgate here she wanted us to go ahead and have something painted up on the back uh, to kind of uh, remember her dad with. So we're, we are going to get Dan Shanks to go ahead and do us a really cool thing to, to kind of do in remembrance of him on that. But yeah it's so straight. The paint job's really good on it. The old tires are super dry rotted on it from just setting up. Now we do have some of the clear coat, you know, flaking off up here like I was talking about. But normally the whole truck uh, is like that. Big old toe mirrors that these things come with. Uh, but yeah, so everything is covered in dirt and cobwebs and dad found that spider right there that was <laughs> making them earlier. So. I guess we're going to get busy, uh, replace these batteries. I'll turn the key over, see what gauges work, and uh, just go from there. All righty, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the battery removal, hopefully. Hopefully it'll go fairly easy. Uh, these things are pretty corroded up and pretty nasty, but we'll get them broke loose and then we'll be able to do something with them. Got some... WD or something? Uh, yeah, I didn't even think of WD, so. I'm honestly surprised that these batteries even charged up any at all, enough to even turn on the stereo and, and stuff like that, but. There's another, yeah. This old truck here, I had seen it, uh, Seen it several times, but me and my wife were riding around looking. I don't know what we were even looking at, but uh, I seen it and I was like, I need to ask her about that truck. You know, it's been sitting out there a while. And uh, with any kind of old vehicle, I'll, I'll keep my eyes peeled and, and seeing stuff. And uh, even though this thing here is a little newer than, than what we'd normally mess with, it still caught my attention. So, Well, it wouldn't have been much longer. It would have been something we would have been looking for anyway. So. Yeah. Add a few more years to it. In case you need those. It's going a little easier than I thought it would, but. What little bit of power um, these batteries were sending through the system, 
the, the fuel gauge would, was not coming on at all. So I don't know if there's no fuel in this tank. Uh, being that it's five years old, uh, I don't know exactly what kind of shape the fuel is even going to be in this. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start. I'll pull this filter off, the fuel filter, once we get to that. That'll kind of give us an idea of what it looks like inside the filter there. We've got a new fuel filter, and, uh, but hopefully it won't be too bad in the system. Maybe there's not even anything in it. There's one battery off. We may have to put some tape or something on this wire here. It's kind of okay. This hot wire's got a coatings coming off of it a little bit. About to hit this battery holder. Yeah, you don't want any sparks coming from that. Clean up these, these ends a little bit. On the oil here, does have oil. Uh, needs some added on it. But it does have oil in it, and it is super dark, uh, which is pretty typical for, uh, for a diesel. Don't know how old the oil is, when the last time that he actually changed it, so that's one thing we're also going to do. Drain the oil, change the filter, uh, and be sure we get all that done before we try to turn it over. Hope everybody's having a great week. It's already Thursday, so we about got this week whooped. First week of 2021. Yeah. Well, I've already started losing stuff, so I guess I'll have to... Lost my post. Put the other side over here. Fell straight down. Hopefully it's somewhere I can get to it. It doesn't need it right now, but we will want it later. It looks like I'm gonna have to find it later though. It dropped in behind that, sh that plastic shield thing there. So it looks like, I was a little concerned on these batteries because the, the posts were a little bit more towards the middle versus towards this outer edge, the way the other ones were. But we have plenty of slack, so they should work just fine. Caps off. There's pliers there if you need them. That's a screwdriver or something to pry it up with. Seems like it's been forever since we've done a live uh, revival video. Our last one was with uh, Derek from Vice Grip Garage on the 57 uh, Chevy 210. Which that car is actually on uh, on eBay right now for sale. So if anybody's interested in that, we'll show you a little bit later more info on that. Uh, we put that car up for sale. Uh, so if anyone's interested, it was a no reserve auction that we started at a dollar, and I think it's up over a little bit over two thousand dollars now. So mm. all that'll go to buying Christ Christian some more tires for or some Crocs. Yeah. Yeah, I, I bet when somebody first seen that on eBay for a dollar, they were like, whew, I'm bidding on that. <laughs> I know when, the first time I ever got on eBay, I was, it was when I, eBay first started in that. And I came across something like that and I thought, oh man, what a deal. Yeah, it was when you first bid, but then once everybody else starts bidding on it four or five days later, it's way out of, yeah. way out of my price range. <laughs> What'd he get up to? Three bucks. <laughs> Three bucks. <laughs> Alrighty. How's yours going? Fine, I'm gonna wait to tie mine in until after you get yours. Uh, where you need it or want it or both. I just didn't want that to accidentally cross across to the... Yeah, it would have been a... 
You'd have probably had more smoke than she had off those tires. Or at least more spark. Yeah, right. I didn't pop or anything when I hooked up, so we must be doing something right or Yeah. So these live revivals are always fun because I mean we're completely live right now, mm -hmm. so we don't really know what's gonna happen with any of this. Uh, you can't really edit out the hard parts. You can't speed up the slow parts. Uh, or the mistakes. <laughs> yeah, or the mistakes. So it's always interesting to see how these turn out, but it's always a lot of fun hanging out with y'all as we do it. Yes, it is. It just kind of feels weird because you know they're, they're behind, uh, behind you on everything and that, but you really don't get to see what they're saying or anything like that very often, so... Hmm. Reach up in there, see if I can feel that missing piece. Nope. I'll just have to find it later. Or, that's a good place for some baling wire. <laughs> you need this, or are you good? No, I'm good. This one ain't getting the tightest here, though. That's one thing we didn't grab was any battery ends cable no. ends, did we? I said this one's seen it's it's kind of a strange I don't know, I would almost say rigged setup, but it's it's got threads on both ends. I can just get it to crimp down a little bit more. Don't want to fight up. Table that keeps just tightening on this other side, maybe. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, I'm going to turn the key over, see what kind of better dash lights we've got. And okay. Stuff. Make sure we got good connections. Yeah. Better interior light right off the bat. Louder buzzer. So still not showing anything on the, uh, boy that's annoying. Still not showing anything on the fuel. Uh, I don't know if it'll try to maybe kick in once we actually turn it over. If it's stuck, maybe don't work, or if there's just flat out no fuel in it. Radio comes on though, that's cool. So, all right, cool. All right, so we got some uh, batteries put on it here. I'm not gonna try to turn this truck over just yet. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and drain the oil out of it, uh, put some new oil in it, uh, probably have Dad go ahead and try to get that oil filter off over there uh, while I go down here to the pan. Uh, these things take a lot of oil, so this is gonna hold 11 quarts of oil, uh, which is, you almost gotta take out a small loan if you wanna change your oil in these diesels here. Uh, so I'll, I'll go down there, try to find the drain plug on this pan, drain all that oil out. He can see if he can get that oil filter off. Then once we get the oil changed, uh, we'll move on to the fuel filter, I guess, here. All right, that thing is in a tight spot in there, but I think I can get hold of it with something and get a little rotation. Got a grip? Got a grip. It's it turned loose though. Oh. I've started out wrong direction anyways. I hate working on things that are upside down <laughs> because I'll always go the wrong direction. <laughs> yep, everything. I'm fixing to go ahead. It's right at the end of the thread. You wanna go ahead and go off with it? Uh, yeah, I got a bucket up underneath there. To, I don't okay. know if that it'll hit it, but. Oh. I'll try to aim for it. I think this thing just takes the end of the 3 8 ratchet. Yeah. 
I thought I was at the end of the threads. So I don't think y'all can see this, but there's a lot of oil that's kind of went around where this plug looks like this plug's leaking some right here. She mentioned that the transmission might have been a little, slipping a little bit. There's a lot of oil. Uh, well, it's it's got it's red, so there is a lot of transmission fluid uh, on this pan right here. So I don't know how how low it is on fluid, but there's obviously some kind of an issue that's allowing this transmission fluid to get on this pan right here. So, alrighty, filter come off. I didn't even spill any. I did something wrong then, didn't I? <coughs> wow. Golly, I'm gonna need a <laughs> a running start. Uh, I'm gonna need something to put on this. It is tight. Cheater bar of some sort. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have to get my phone. Mm -hmm. Let's see what I can find you. Golly, I'm losing my strength. I got a the dirt on. <laughs> This should work. This work? Yeah, I think so. Just, I mean, it's kind of big to be swinging, but. <laughs> oh, if I can't get it out, get the drill ready. Oh man, this is a little bigger than I thought it was. I don't know how big around, I don't think this piece over here will work. It's... This will work. Okay. If this don't work. Yeah. She's make sure, hot. Make sure you're going the right way. I don't know who the Hercules was that put that thing back in it. Alrighty. Let's pan up underneath here. We'll be able to check it out. See what it, oh, it's, it's dark. You want this, I guess you want this flitter put back on there? Uh. Yeah, you can. You got a little oil to yeah, it. Yeah, I stole a little out of the other oil flitter. Oh, I hope this thing starts taking it in some. It's about to overflow. I better put the plug back in it. <laughs> this thing ain't taking it into the bottom part as fast as it needs to. There we go. I couldn't breathe. Couldn't breathe. Oh, I still ain't taking it. I know I took the center part out of it. I'm glad you got that job and I got this one. I don't think I could have got underneath there anyways. Still draining? Yeah, it's still draining, but it ain't. The pan's just not taking it. I just don't want it to overflow all on the floor. Right. I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. Don't let it sit there and drain. Don't set my. Well, that old concrete's cold. Don't set my tools down and lost them instead of putting them back where they belong. So, the hole's pretty black here. Like I said, it's pretty typical on a, on a diesel. That oil will turn black real, real quick. Got a good viscosity to it though. I ain't gonna taste it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta you are, taste it. So you already got a filter put on got it? Got the filter on it, yep. Yep. So we're gonna let that drain out a little bit more uh, our fuel filter is going to be back back in here. I know that you guys cannot ugh, sticking to me. I know you guys can't see it. Um, so a lot of the times people will pull these uh, master cylinder bolts off here, just these two bolts. You know, don't break loose the lines or anything like that, and it'll allow you to get this master cylinder out of the way a little bit, and you can get down there to that uh, that fuel filter a little bit. So honestly, we might go that route. I'll see if I can get our wrench up in there 
and uh, if, if, if I can't, then we'll definitely pull these loose. Uh, once we get this put back in, oil put in it. I don't know where that oil's at, but you might uh, get it ready. Honestly, I think that oh, there, there. I tried to pop that thing there loose earlier, and it is super tight. Oh my goodness. Ooh, there it goes. <laughs> that hadn't been off in a while, has it? Mm-mm. Got about 772 people watching with us, so thanks guys for hanging out. Uh, I hope that y'all are enjoying this video so far. Uh, we've got a uh, we've got a really cool one coming up after this one. It's with a 1967 uh, Mercury commuter station wagon, and that thing's been setting up a while now. I don't know what it. We'll have to go back and watch yeah. exactly see what he said on how long it's been setting, but it uh, originated in. Uh, come out of Alaska at some point in its life, then it was over in Vegas, and then we found it down here in Texas. But it's pretty much rust free, got a 390 in it, covered with just mice home and squirrel home <laughs> or something like that. So we'll have to kind of get it all cleaned up, but it'll be a fun one to see if we can get up and running. And uh, we all kind of fell in love with it, so yeah. it, it might stick around the shop a little while. I think they said the, uh, was it the brakes? It yeah, brake they, issues they parked it because of the brakes, so. I'm gonna go ahead and Pop the air filter in there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so we got put a new air filter. Going to go ahead and put that on there as well. Get back down here in the cold. We're going a lot, replacing a lot more. That's, this one's not bad. We're replacing a lot more stuff on this one than what we normally do on some of these other ones in that, but it's, it's just because uh, one thing is I don't know enough about diesels, and if we don't do it, <laughs> Like that could be what we're wrong with it, so I figure it's better to go ahead and do it, do it the right way. Neither yeah. one of us are really familiar with diesels. Uh, to be completely honest with you, the first time I had experience um, with one was on that 63 Cadillac we were talking about. So what knowledge I gained, that we built that about a year ago, what knowledge I'd gained about them, uh, I put it in the section of my mind that was labeled forget after so long, so <laughs> I've kind of forgot. <laughs> Maybe it'll come back. That's the biggest file in my mind. <laughs> and I forget to delete it and clear it out or anything, so it's still in there. It's like I got a mind like a like a trap. You know, once it gets in there, it ain't coming out. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to put it as tight as it was, but honestly, it, that might have been they were just trying to keep it from leaking. It probably right. needs a new gasket on there, which I don't have. Alrighty, well, that was quick enough and easy enough. It wasn't, it doesn't look bad, but I think it was, uh, it was probably time. I mean, my air filter ain't that clean. That's about three quarters, that's as tight as they had it. Get back out from underneath here. <laughs> All right. Wipe my hands off. Yeah, I started saying there's some shop towels over there somewhere, but I'm not exactly sure where. So, so we've got uh, oil drained, new oil filter put on it, new air filter put on it. Uh, Dad's going to go ahead and start putting uh, 11 quarts of oil down in this thing. And I don't even think I'm going to mess around with trying to see if I can get this uh, fuel filter off. I'm just going to go ahead and pull this this boost or this master cylinder out of the way some, because uh, for the most part, from what I've seen, it's a whole lot easier just to get it moved moved away here. So I'm going to go ahead and break these two bolts loose, get it out of the way, and see if we can get that fuel filter out. Oh. 
I don't know if this will work. It says engine oil. <laughs> that motor oil. That's just an old habit. I guess a lot of us old folks, you know, now that you get called out on it now if you if you say motor. Right. Instead no. of engine. Right. Because motors are electric. Motors are electric, yep. We are ready, right? Yeah. Okay. We always know what we're talking about, but uh, nowadays if you don't say the correct thing. We don't always know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see that. I didn't say the right thing. So this filter has a like a, a water trap in it as well, and it's got a drain here on the bottom. You can kind of push out. So there is some there is some diesel coming out of it, but not a lot. It smells smells like diesel, and it's not red or rusty looking. It's it looks gotta taste it. Pretty good. <laughs> Should have tasted the oil. I would taste that, but. Alrighty. Now, is this 11 quarts plus the filter or just 11 uh, I think quarts it's total? I think it's 11 width, but you may check it as you're getting close. Okay. Once again, I, this is all foreign to me. Even, even putting oil in a vehicle is foreign to me. <laughs> or we're not putting it in, just changing it. So, she said this truck was running when they parked it, as y'all heard, so... Um, Assuming brakes and all that good stuff. I'm gonna pull this cap off here real quick, see what it looks like inside. Do we only have two of these? Yeah, did I not get enough? There's only a gallon in each one. I thought they usually come with five quarts. It's just got four. It's only got eight. Got eight plenty quarts. of uh, plenty of brake fluid in it. Yeah, it's just one gallon, so four quarts to the gallon only gives us eight of them, so. There might be. I think there is some more yeah. down there at the other end. If nothing else, I'll water it down. <laughs> or do you like my truck, and that's normally where it runs anyways. I'm gonna go down that way and check and see what we All right. what we got. See there was dad bragging that we know what we're talking about and I buy eight quarts of oil instead of eleven. So you're not break. We're not, I'm not breaking any kind of dropping my tools, but uh, not breaking loose any kind of the brake system on the line. So there's no way we get any air or anything like that by by doing this. This is just I'm bolting it from the the, the power booster here, which which makes your brakes easy, your brake pedal easier to press. Uh, so no harm done by moving this out of the way to get to that. See, be careful you don't bend your lines or anything like that. I'm gonna grab this other camera, give you guys a little bit of a better idea what I'm talking about here and doing. So, uh, Right down in here, I don't know if y'all can see that. Uh, that's, that's our fuel filter. 
kind of hard to get at because these wires are in the way. But right here, got my hand on it. Uh, that's going to be the filter we're going to pull off and, and replace there. So with this, with this uh, master cylinder being there, you just can't quite get at it. So now it's out of the way and should be able to get at it a little better. All right. We had three quarts down there. So I'm going to add, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to check it just to be sure, but All right. I know we're, we know we're close, but I don't want you to have to crawl back up underneath there and break that loose after you tighten it as loose as you have. I mean, just tighten it as tight as you have. That's a dipstick there now. Yeah. You can sword fight with that. One of the things we had to do on that Cadillac to fit that motor down in there is we also put air ride on it. So one of the things, these pans are huge. I mean, they're super deep. So we had to cut that pan down and actually widen it some to keep the same volume uh, inside there as well. So uh, just a little bit of information of what we ran into when we put that in that car. Showing anything yet? Yeah, it's it shows to be almost full, but wants to let you look at it there. It's hmm. safe right there. Yeah. Need to wait or go ahead uh, and how much you more. got in there right now? There should be about eight and a half quarts in there. That, that big old filter is going to hold a lot. Right. I'll have to go ahead and, I'll go ahead and put another cord in. Boy, it's still tight to get at this thing. There we go. So, we're not sure if we're going to have to try to bleed out the lines on this. And uh, I'll kind of show you guys later on. Well, duh, Lance. I'm doing the same thing you did. Going backwards? Yeah. <laughs> and the apple don't fall far from the tree. I don't know if that's good to say or not for you. <laughs> Anyways, we'll show you what we're going to have to do possibly if we have to bleed the air out of the lines there. Someone didn't have that on there tight enough. I had to tighten it first, that way I can. Yeah. That's why I, I always tighten it to make sure they were on there tight enough <laughs> before I start. Now we know we can call you out on it like, oh, it's already broke loose. catching it down there it really looks it looks pretty good oh yeah good enough to taste <laughs> <laughs> not yet can you get that pan out from uh, the, not the pan but that bucket where we can kind of pour it in there well this one over here yeah Trying to think of how to kind of show them here. If you want to grab that camera out of the inside, Dad. We'll see what this looks like. Figure it out. No, but I just pulled it loose. <laughs> I guess that's a little closer. lever on the side that slides. You can touch the back of it. So this obviously has oil down in it already. I wish I didn't. I wish it didn't, so you could kind of tell. But see, it looks. That's some pretty good looking yeah, diesel. Pretty good. Yeah. Not seeing anything that's scary. No, no lumps or anything. <laughs> I 
no rusts or nothing like that. It's not funky colored. It doesn't smell funny. It's not slimy or gelled up. Uh, so I think we're going to be pretty good on our fuel system here. Now we're going to pull this off and, uh, and go ahead and start putting it on our new filter. Yeah, on that thing, it's got a little lever on the side. You release. Oh, okay. Well, I've seen something. I tried to push it, but it didn't work. So I just pulled. We're still learning on this whole setup gig. Uh, one, eventually, hopefully, we'll have a, a dedicated table set up, which we do, but there's no camera on it. So it'd be cool to actually be able to show you guys as we start uh, tearing this stuff apart. But I'm just going to work over here real quick, get this part pulled off and put on the other one. We found a really cool ad on these old trucks. So this is a, I didn't mention, this is a second gen Dodge. So the first year of the second gen Dodge, they, they changed body styles in 94. Uh, so it's kind of cool flashback with this old commercial we found back in 94, some of the things that they were impressed by and some of the things they were uh, very proud of, I wish they should be. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and play that for y'all real quick. And uh, we're gonna try to get this off this and put on our new filter. Who makes the rules about pickups anyway? There's a new pickup that breaks all the rules, and it's from Dodge. Rules like four-wheel anti-lock brakes are for cars, not pickups. Dodge is the first and only full-size pickup to offer four-wheel anti-lock brakes. It used to be that for serious torque, diesel was the only choice, not with Dodge. Not only does Dodge offer the hard-working Cummins turbo diesel, but there's a full series of Magnum engines all the way up to the new Magnum V10. And it's be comfortable. This new Dodge Ram has the widest seating area of any full-size pickup. And who said that airbags and pickups don't go together? Dodge puts a standard driver's side airbag in every pickup it builds. <laughs> when it comes to full-size pickups, the rules have changed. And Dodge changed them with the 1994 Ram Pickup, Motor Trend's 1994 Truck of the Year. Folks at Dodge, who brought you this pickup, had one thing in mind all the way through its development. To break the mold in designing an all-new pickup from the ground up. The rules have changed. We're trying to fix a GoPro that I didn't realize wasn't working, so maybe we can get it back up and going as Dad's finishing up that other. Uh, bear with us real quick. You want to try it out? Yeah. There we go. Yay. Yes. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Our coolest shot uh, wasn't working. So praise God. Thank you, Lord, for helping us with that. <laughs> this is one of my favorite shots right here, and I didn't realize we weren't, we weren't getting it. So. Um, so, yeah, let's take advantage of it, Christian. I want to show them what I was talking about. So basically right here is, is our injectors that run into this, into this motor. It's a six cylinder motor. So uh, obviously there's six of them. So what we'll have to do if we get some, if there's air in these lines, we'll have to pop these loose. And it doesn't have a, uh, 
It doesn't have an electric fuel pump. Everything's pretty much mechanical on this. So we'll have to turn the key over and just let it, let it turn over, let it turn over until you start seeing a little bit of that diesel uh, fluid start coming out of these and then we'll tighten them back and that's how you, you know, kind of get the air out of the lines. There's also a prime button on our, on our pump over there will prime up as well, so. Alrighty, here's the... Got it. Here's that part of it, I don't... So Dad's got it switched over here. Uh, was, that not a, was that not a cool commercial though? I mean, uh, I, I, don't go, I don't know if they were the first ones that put the airbags in the steering wheel. I mean, the way they were kind of wording it there, they were on the top of, of the first ones to do it. So that's, that's kind of a pretty cool thing. Uh, and a pretty good accomplishment too, I guess. Yep. I mean, they're something that hasn't changed in a long time. So we're going to go ahead and put fill this uh, filter up with diesel. So you don't have this big old air pocket as it's pumping it up in there and then you definitely have to, you know, break these lines loose and, and uh, try to get the air out of it. So we've got a little diesel right here. Like I said, Dad's got all this put back together. We'll fill it up. I'll try to maneuver my way back up in there and tighten her in. And this is diesel and it is in a gas jug. And we are doing it awkward just so you can kind of see us. <laughs> so you can call us out on it. All right. Should be good. All righty. Did it have a little uh, plastic, I mean a little rubber thing? Yeah, let me see. I think okay. there's actually something here. Hold there was that. an O-ring for the, the one part, and I got I it on there. I think that actually goes right up on Okay. Let's see if I can see. Yeah, let me get this old one out. So there's a little rubber ring that goes on here. I'm trying to get the old one off. Well, don't tear it off in case this one don't fit. I know it. I used to always think, well, just yank it off and get rid of it. Let's see if I can get a pick or something. Just yank it off and tear it out and do whatever you had to do. And then whenever you get in there, you don't have the right one, have to reuse the old one. It's unusable. Hopefully we don't have, uh, didn't buy stuff like, you know, an extra starter if we have st starter issues or anything like that. So um, hopefully we don't run into anything. Uh, Basically bought just the tune -up stuff. typical tune-up stuff. Come off there. I know it doesn't look like I'm doing anything, but just staring off into space, <laughs> but I promise you guys I'm... I'm getting somewhere. We can't even say you're doing it behind the scenes though. <laughs> Just doing it behind the cover of the engine. We're going to have to get us some cameras that you put around your wrist. Our heater kicked on and threw him off. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I was listening to make sure that it, it, it started up. Otherwise, we was going to be smoked out in here. We had some issues with it the other day, and it didn't light, and it just sat there and just kept pumping uh, diesel into the, the area and just smoking up the whole building. While I wrestle this thing off, uh, Christian, go ahead and show them what our next, what we've got in store for them on our next live revival video. We've got this 1967 Mercury uh, commuter station wagon. So uh, that's us there loading it up. We filmed uh, picking it up and then uh, we'll have it back here in the shop. We have not touched that car. We'll get it inside the shop and uh, dig into it together. That one's gonna be fun, because like I said, it's got stuff uh, matched, just laid everywhere from, a, from an animal, just packing it in really good, so. 
other than that and the, the headliner coming down, I mean, it's in really good shape. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the best we can tell, other than the back, back glass on the, the back door is, is shattered, but uh, that's just to let the fumes out in case there's any fumes in there. So I did get it off, guys. I just needed to tell you about that commuter <laughs> wagon. All right. You need a rag or something? Yeah. I have a clean one. Here's a, here's a used one. It'll help you some. See how much I can not spill out of this by trying to get it up in there. I know that this is probably really hard for you guys to see. It's not really an easy way of filming it. Everything's so tacked in close here. Got her lined up. That's the way it always works though. It's the stuff that they know that you're going to have to typically change out, they put in the in the worst spot they can. That way, they uh, they know you've earned that that <laughs> rights to say you changed it. I guess. Yeah. And I don't know what the deal is, but for some reason today you decided to pick all the hard ones for yourself and, uh -huh. and uh, give me the easy ones. Uh, I like the way this year's starting out already. <laughs> new year, new me. <laughs> Gets any easier for me, I'm going to fall asleep. I'll I have to go over there and sit by Christian and make her come over here. All right, I've done got enough diesel on it. It's so Slick. slippery. Yeah. Snug it up on there and then connect them wires back. And we'll go ahead and plug this. Um, you want to start maybe putting some, some diesel in it in the tank? Uh, yes, sure can. Then we'll see if that gauge moves any. Make sure I put this, <laughs> go the right way this time. I'm hoping this will pour in there easy enough without having to fight it too much. It looks like it'll be easy enough. They got everything busted out in there. It's just a wide open hole. They wanted it to be able to take that diesel quick. It sounds like it's going into an empty tank. <laughs> Does it? Yep. Don't ever want to get those things too tight, but you want to be sure that they're not leaking out everywhere. Should work pretty good on that one. I'm just trying to clean up my mess of diesel. Yeah, I know you want it tight enough. You don't want to be sucking any air because yeah, the uh, the backhoe up at the city. We we had the guys change the filters on it and had issues and oh, it was issues until they finally got it figured out. It was not on there tight enough. So once again, guys, thanks for hanging out with us uh, tonight. If you're just now joining in, I noticed it looks like we have about a little over a thousand people watching with us. Uh, we're trying to see if we can get this old Dodge diesel to crank up for the first time. And according to the ins uh, inspection sticker here, in about six years. So not too terribly long of a time. Um, the truck, I don't think I even mentioned, it does have about... So it's showing about 234,000 miles on the odometer. 
What's crazy is though, a lot of these old vehicles we get out of the woods and that, that's, this is the way they started out. So yeah. we just parked them out there. That's true. Wasn't planning on leaving them out there very long and yeah. 30, 40 years later, they're still sitting there, so. Yeah, we've been blessed on, a, on a, every will it run we've messed with. We've never bought a vehicle that they parked it because the motor was, was blown or something right. like that. So we've always been able to get them up and going. That's the longest five gallons I've ever seen. I'm gonna check out the uh, coolant here. It's one thing we haven't checked yet. I looked, I thought I could see it in there. I couldn't touch it though. Uh, yeah, I see it there. It's a little low. I may go ahead and Here's, here it top is right it here. off just a hair. <clears throat> Definitely not low enough to cause any kind of harm, but. Check that oil one more time now that it's had time to completely get down. Yeah. Not even enough to add to it. Maybe a cup. <laughs> so there, so it's... How many uh, you got in there? I'd go ahead and fill it on up because it's going to pump, or at least that, uh, that oil filter is huge. It's going to pump over a quart to it. Yeah. It shows over full, just, just barely though. How so. much you got in it though? Uh, Ten. Ten quarts? Yes. Well, I'll be able to tell you. you yeah, got about about ten quart quart. I got about a quart left. Put it in? Yeah, it's, I think it'll. I almost forgot about my sinking. <laughs> Master cylinder. <laughs> no, you just didn't want to ride with any brakes. Mm -hmm. Would have been interesting when I, if I was trying to drive it. Uh, guys, we've also got, so we're doing the uh, live will it run on the, on, the, on the station wagon. We've also got, uh, so we've been trying to mix in some completely produced and edited style videos that show more, more stuff, like maybe when we buy it, fixing it up. Uh, we've got this car right here. It's a 1968, uh, she's not. <laughs> she, she was chatting. She just got a pay cut. It's a 1968 <laughs> Volkswagen uh, Beetle that we're gonna do a Herbie style build on. So we've got a narrowed front beam we're gonna put up underneath it. Uh, some really cool old school 17s. Uh, slam it down on the ground, do the, the Herbie logos of course. Kind of a patina style a little bit, buff that paint out. So that'll be our next produced style video. It ought to be fun. Yeah. Uh, I think it'll get a lot of it, grab a lot of attention. It'll be a fun car to drive yeah. around in. That, that car's actually already made an appearance before with us working on yeah. it, so. Yeah, we got that car up and running. And uh, honestly though, I found, a, I found a pretty nice looking motor on Marketplace that I would uh, like to do some trading around on. And maybe you guys will see us pull that motor out and put in something shiny. Shiny and flashy and... Yeah. We're getting close. Yep. Getting down to see if we're going to have to, uh, you know, prime this system or not, bleed the system. Dad, you want to pull out and kind of show them the transmission? Uh, we checked it out there, but transmission stick. Let me go ahead and get a good clean stab at it here. Oops. Uh, so I'd recommend, you know, pulling that master cylinder off for that. Makes it pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, which right now is showing way up here, which is which is above where it needs to be, but it's not running either, so. So it's still got a really good, yeah. you know, red color to it. I don't know how well y'all can see that. You can smell it most of the time. It'll smell kind of burnt. It don't taste burnt. 
It don't taste that, burnt. I thought that's what you were fixing to do with it. And I thought, oh, he's going to do it. <laughs> so I did. It does taste uh, a little oily. <clears throat> so we pretty much checked all the fluids on this thing. We've checked other than the washer fluid. We haven't checked that. I didn't care about that. <laughs> We have coolant in the, in the radiator. We have fresh oil in, in, the, in the block now. Um, this is not gonna mean a whole lot, but we do have a good uh, brake cylinder that has a master cylinder that has you know, plenty, of, plenty of brake fluid in it. Clean the lungs. Yeah, we cleaned, cleaned the lungs out of it, put a new air filter. Dad just showed you the transmission uh, fluid, what it looks like. So I think I'm gonna turn it over and kind of, well, let me pump this up. Let me pump it up down here on this. I may have to grab my light again. Well, okay. There's a little, there's a little pump down here where you can pump these systems up. And sometimes it takes forever. Oh, I heard something. I heard something too. Nope. Oh. Feel like we may have a line that's broke loose because I hear it coming out somewhere every once in a while. Let's look over in here is where it sounded like. I don't know if there might be a rubber line that is broke. Let's see if we're losing anything. Hard to tell because I lost so much once I... Let me look under here while you're... Nothing coming down. I hear it. Well... Maybe it's... It's pretty tough, you know. Yeah. It's got some pressure built up to it, so. All right, guys, I think what we're, what we're going to do is, uh, well, let me turn the key over real quick and see if we're showing any fuel in it. Uh, fuel gauge still hasn't moved. Well, it must have because the, the fuel light's off on it. Five gallons probably ain't much in this old truck. Right. I think I'm going to go ahead and move uh, one camera angle that we had down below there. So just give us just a second. Uh, I'm going to try to move it out here to the exhaust so y'all have a first shot of seeing what that exhaust looks like as we're turning it over. Uh, if she's going to crank up, you'll kind of get to see that real quick. So give me just a second. Entertain them. I was just fixing to say I could uh, I could do a song and a dance, but uh, Lance wants them to hang around for a little bit. So you want to check that out real quick, Christian? So there y'all go. That should work. All right. Uh, I guess we. You want to go ahead and give it a shot? Yeah. Let's see what she does, guys. We got about 1,100 people watching on here. So uh, thank thank all of y'all for hanging out. This is why we, it's why we do this, so. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. Try it, ain't it? Yep. One more time. There she is. No smoke. Put it back in here. Well, she's running. Pretty easy. Yeah. Well, that was too easy. Let's check this oil, see how it looks now that not the cleanest rag. I got a good clean one here. <laughs> Make sure we're good and level, and we'll try to let her run a little longer and kind of rev on her just a little bit. I'm going to let her settle down just a little bit. In the meantime, you do a song and dance. In the meantime, while we let this oil settle down, uh, I mentioned that it's been a little while since we've done a live, a live Will It Run, and it was with a 57 Chevy 210. So, Chris, if you can pull that up right quick. We have that car for sale on eBay right now. We started it out at a dollar. Uh, and on whenever I'd done this screen video is at 2100. So if you're interested in buying that car, it's a no reserve auction. Whoever's a high bidder will win. As you can see there, there's a big Derek himself. He helped us get it up and running. So if you haven't seen that video, 
uh, go check it out. We had a whole lot of fun and uh, super grateful that he was able to stop by the shop and. <laughs> the front one froze up. Oh, is it? I think so. Uh, uh oh, oh guys. that's not a good sight. We lost our front camera for some reason, so I'll start. This one right here? Yep. Okay. So, yeah, this is the joys of live. What's funny is we fight cameras sometimes longer than we do the vehicles. How's it looking? We're showing right on, right right on, on the, the money. Yep, right on the money. So. Well, I'm going to crank it up again. All righty. I might grab that GoPro where we can walk around a little bit. Okay, I'm going to grab these tools so that nothing vibrates and falls in and kills anybody. Wow, super easy. So, I'm trying to get what you guys can see here, if you can see. Our oil pressure is, is really good. It's up above 40 there. Our gas gauge is still showing that we need, our fuel gauge is still showing that we need fuel. Uh, alternator's charging on it. Temp's not up yet. Radiator's working, so. Blowing stuff loose up front there. Go give it a couple revs. Give it a couple revs? Like Christian did? No. No smoke. That's good. Got a good sound to it, too. Fuel lights back on. Yeah, I know <laughs> it. Go ahead and put it in gear. Try not to move much, though, because right, we're cool. strapped down. Yeah. We'll have to move cameras. Just see if it tries. Are you in reverse? Yeah, I'm in reverse. Not moving? Yeah, did it, did you feel it? Yeah, I felt it. Oh, yeah, it's moving. Yeah. Try forward. Yeah, it's yeah. moving. You can come forward just a hair. Yeah, all right. Backwards. Yeah, that's good. Cool. You can kill it. That thing's annoying. Ain't it, it is annoying. But safety first. Well, guys, I think our front camera is still froze up on us, so uh, we're limited to this side camera. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and try to pull these these loose. We're time-wise, we've we've typically always run these vi videos. They seem to take us around two hours. So I don't know. Do you know where we're at yet, Christian? Uh, so we're only at an hour and 13 minutes so far, so we're going to break loose these GoPros on the truck here. Maybe we can maybe get that other camera working. If not, we've got one on the other side we can move. I'm just going to go ahead and pull it out of the shop and uh, let you guys see that she's actually moving under her own power uh, rather than just a couple inches here and there. Still froze up on the front, huh? Uh, let me look. I'd say so. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any way to off and on it, or uh, do we not want to mess with that? Take a chance. I don't know. Do y'all want to try it, or? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little scared. I think we'll just move the, the 50 up there. Okay. Back. So bear with us, guys, as we disassemble. Uh, I don't know what you want to call this. This madness. Hopefully we don't turn anything off. Ready for this one to be unplugged? 
Huh? Yeah, we're good. So if anybody's new here, we're going to go ahead and let you watch. I don't, looking at a camera that ain't hooked up. If anybody's new here, we're just unhooking cameras so we can try to drive this thing out of the shop. We got a really cool old commercial. Uh, we're going to let you watch that while we start doing that. Who makes the rules about pickups anyway? There's a new pickup that breaks all the rules, and it's from Dodge. Rules like four-wheel anti-lock brakes are for cars, not pickups. Dodge is the first and only full-size pickup to offer four-wheel anti-lock brakes. It used to be that for serious torque, diesel was the only choice, not with Dodge. Not only does Dodge offer the hard-working Cummins turbo diesel, but there's a full series of Magnum engines all the way up to the new Magnum V10. And who says that trucks can't be comfortable? This new Dodge Ram has the widest seating area of any full-size pickup. And who said that airbags and pickups don't go together? Dodge puts a standard driver's side airbag in every pickup it builds. <laughs> when it comes to full-size pickups, the rules have changed. And Dodge changed them with the 1994 Ram Pickup, Motor Trend's 1994 Truck of the Year. Folks at Dodge, who brought you this pickup, had one thing in mind all the way through its development. To break the mold in designing an all-new pickup from the ground up. The rules have changed. All right, guys, we were panicking. So <laughs> my mouth's not going to line up with this, I don't think. So I might as well not even try. But we were panicking because all of our cameras just dropped off. So we don't know what happened there. So I'm about to get in here. Dad, you're going to have to try to run this one or somebody, Christian, can. Uh, we're going to see if we can get her to move. I guess we need to open that door, don't we? Yeah. Ooh, it's dark. Don't yeah. let me hit that. Kind of tight in here, so there's going to be a lot of back and forth, so I can clear this this doorway. I think you come forward and come this way, you'll be fine. Squish Christian. <laughs> Hopefully I don't lose my mic. It's got this 10 foot antenna on it. Perfect. You doing good? Here we go. Well, they drive her to California. No problems. Okay, you can start turning a little bit. You can get a little closer this way if you need to. Windows work. Look all right? Yeah, you're looking good. Go ahead and yeah, start swinging it because you got this Volkswagen thing here. You're good. Keep coming. Straighten around up. All right, I'll see y'all tomorrow. See y'all later. Yeah, we're only one eyed. Blinker on one side and the headlight on the other, so we're. 
Those are easy fixes though, so. I think once this other door opened it. back inside here. You know, the big old whipper whipper wheel ain't antenna that's good. Right away just a little bit. Transmission don't feel sluggish at all to me. Headlights on or off? Oh yeah, I left them on. Well guys, I know that my lips ain't probably gonna match up with this camera, but we got her up and running. That transmission don't seem sluggish at all to me. Now maybe when it warms up, it might be a little bit of a different story. Uh, but we were able to get her up and running, been sitting around six years, basically just changed the fluids in it, uh, just done the, the typical routine stuff on it. So we're super happy that you guys were able to hang out with us. I know we weren't able to communicate back and forth a whole lot like we normally do. Uh, but be, be sure to catch us on this next live video when we do the 67 commuter wagon. Uh, that thing's going to be a whole lot of fun. Maybe if we can get it up and going, maybe Christian can get behind the wheel and end the video in a burnout or something like that. So. Yeah. Uh, hopefully thank, we'll get the cameras figured out. Yeah. <laughs> they just yeah. gave up all at once on us. So. Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's a typical live, real right. life yep. <laughs> situation there. So uh, hope y'all have a good rest of the weekend. Uh, great new year. Uh, thank y'all for everything y'all have done for us. And we'll see you on the next one. God bless y'all.